Hi everybody, this is Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby and we're here today to talk about uh, ESC wiring and uh, radio connections for your electric power plant. So the basic components you typically have in a power plant, electric power plant, is going to be your main flight battery, you're going to have your brushless DC motor, your radio receiver, we have both a Spectrum AR6100 here and a Futaba R6008HS, um, and then also your ESC. Now ESCs can come in a variety of flavors and sizes from very, very small, uh, ultra micro, uh, 7 amp or less, uh, all the way up to 60, 60 amp plus. So you can get very, very large um, uh, ESCs very quickly. Now the, the thing that you'll find very common though between all of them is they have the same connectors, same inboard and outboard connectors for primary function. Now some ESCs have additional data logging capabilities. Uh, you can connect to them with outboard devices. Uh, but ultimately they have three wires that connect to the brushless motor. They have two wires that come out of them to connect to your flight battery. And they have a radio system connection. So that most ESCs do have BECs. A BEC stands for battery eliminator circuit. A battery eliminator circuit uh, pulls power from your main flight battery, back feeds it through the radio connection coming from the ESC into your receiver empowers all your servos and your and your um, uh, any other electrical devices you have on board the aircraft. Now there are amperage limitations to a BC built into uh, electronic speed control so always check your budget as we refer to it in the electrical world check your your um, uh, your demand budget to make sure that you aren't exceeding the capabilities of the BEC built into your electronic speed control. But getting on to the wiring, the basic wiring connections, um, we'll start off with our ESC it's kind of the heart of the entire setup. And now I've, I've actually chosen one of my ESCs that I've connected an, an add-on device, an Electrotech uh, LXS21. And what this is is a low voltage battery indicator. This will let me know when I reach, and this particular one is configured for 11.1 .1 volts. Um, when we look at the face of it, it is adjustable, uh, 4 to 15 volt range. This one is pre-configured in the factory for 11.1 .1 volts. So when my main flight battery reaches 11.1 .1 volts, the threshold, being a lithium polymer, I don't want to go below that, uh, this LED, very bright white LED, will light. Now they, these come in multiple configurations. You can actually get them with a remote LED that comes off a wire so you can mount it somewhere else on the model. This one happens to have it mounted on board. Uh, in this particular setup I used for a small helicopter, so I'd mount it right to the pod, to the, uh, to the aircraft pod or the helicopter pod. Uh, rear facing so when I would swing the tail rotor in towards me I could see if this light was illuminated so I could do some frequent battery checks. But uh, we're going to use this configuration. It's very simply wired. Um, the, the LXS21 has a two wire, it's two wire supply, a positive and a negative, and all you do is, is tie that into your main battery connector. Now this is a, a Dean's Ultra plug that I've used on this particular setup. This Phoenix uh, ESC when I received the, the, the Phoenix out of the package, I went ahead and soldered a uh, Dean's connector on it because most of my, my systems use Dean's or, or either EC3's or, or Dean's connectors. So I wanted this one with a Dean's plug on it. So I soldered a Dean's plug and then I went ahead and just soldered a couple more wires on it that are going to feed my LXS battery uh, voltage monitor. So that's really all there is to it. it. It picks up that power coming from the main flight battery into the ESC and then being back fed to the radio system. So it can immediately identify when 11.1 .1 volts is being reached at the battery side to let me know that I have a, a uh, I'm, I've pretty much spent my pack, so it's time to land the helicopter. So we'll show that functionality today. So we have three wires that connect to our motor. Now our motor can, the color coding on, a, on an ESC, uh, is, it can vary tremendously. In fact, in some cases, this E-Flight ESC doesn't even have uh, a color coding at all on the back side of the shrink wrap. Uh, you just have three plugs. So it's a three wire. Um, this is a three-pole brushless DC motor, so it's going to, uh, to look for three incoming connections. Don't worry about the color coding. I can actually mix and match the white with the black, the red with the white, anything I want to. What you're going to do is watch the rotation when you move your throttle stick forward to watch your rotation to make sure the propeller or whatever this is connected to, be it a rotor blade, whatever, is turning in the right direction. If it's not turning in the right direction, the proper direction, all you do is reverse the outermost wires on your ESC. You can leave the center one in its position, doesn't matter what the color is, leave it fixed, and then reverse the two outer uh, connections, and uh, it'll reverse the motor direction. So it's very simple. Now, some of your ESCs do have the ability built, built into them to reverse the direction of the motor 
uh, through uh, a USB program or a software programming. Um, if you can't get to the connection, if it's very difficult, say you've put a helicopter together and it's in a scale body, and at the very end you realize my motor's going in the wrong direction, it's difficult to dig all those wires out and reverse it. So if your ESC has the capability of reversing uh, in the software program or in the setup, uh, that can come in really handy. Otherwise, just reverse those two outer wires and you're set. So our first connection is, we'll go ahead and follow the color, co color coding sequence on this since we do have red, white, and black being represented. I'll connect my red to my red, my black to my black, and my white to my white. Now my ESC, or my ESC is connected to my brushless DC motor. The next connection we're going to concentrate on is the radio connection. And depending on the manufacturer radio that you're using, uh, Spectrum uh, uses a, a setup that, that uh, their Z connector doesn't have a, a keyed pin configuration for one. You'll notice the difference between the Futaba and between the Spectrum, and that is um, you, you don't have a keying on the actual connector. Here you can see a small tab that requires uh, or the little that'll accept a key only in one direction. So a Futaba connection um, has a little tab sticking off the end. Now the um, and that actually indicates the signal side of the connection. On a uh, Spectrum, which is also uh, the same type of connector used on on high tech uh, servos and, and a few other manufacturers out there, it's a Z style connector. There's no pinning at all, so they do indicate the polarity down here. You can see the negative is the far right pin. The positive is the center pin, and that little hat symbol is the signal. So when we look at our wiring coming from our ESC, in this case we have uh, uh, the brown being the negative, the red being the positive, and the orange being the signal. So when we actually connect it to our receiver, we just want to make sure we follow that. Now when you connect your, your ESC to your receiver, you're going to go in through the throttle channel. Your ESC connects to the throttle, and then if you have a BEC built into your, to your electronic speed control, again, BEC stands for battery eliminator circuit, it's going to provide that voltage needed by the receiver to power the entire radio system. It actually picks that up through the positive connector and the negative connector coming from the, the um, electronic speed control. So when you connect that in, make sure our polarity is correct, our negatives to the far right, so our brown wire on our throttle channel will be off to the right. When you make that connection, as soon as you plug in your flight battery, unless there's another outboard switch, some ESCs do have a little, a little flip switch, a slide switch that allows you to power the radio system on or off. In this case, it does not. This Phoenix 25 is just straight through. As soon as I connect my flight battery, it's going to, uh, to energize the system through these two wires coming in from the ESC connection. So I've got it in throttle. It'll power the entire bus. Now, most of these receivers have a shared bus. The positive and the negative are all connected. So as soon as you power up, the uh, receiver with the ESC connection to the BEC, it's going to uh, energize all the servos. Now the servos are going to wait for that signal to come from the radio, which is the, the farthest left connector in this particular example. Uh, it's going to look for that signal to be able to, to actuate or move. But you've powered the entire system off of this one feed coming in through the throttle channel, so it's kind of dual purpose. And yes, you do leave the battery empty then. If you have ample supply coming for your BEC off of your electronic speed control, you don't need to put an external battery on these receivers. It'll energize just fine off of the feed coming from your ESC.